efficiency, renewable energy and delivery. Google, Google has over the years invested billions of dollars in expanding its data center footprint across the world. And today I'm joined by Joe Caver, Vice President for the Global Data Centers at Google. Um, Joe, thanks for talking to me. You joined Google in 2008, so maybe let's go through how have you seen the market change over the last 10 years? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, impact has been a location strategy, mm. right? With the, uh, the progression of, uh, of cloud computing, um, that's driving a lot of our, our location strategy. So we're, we're evaluating and building in more areas of the world than we ever have previously. Okay, that's interesting. So what makes the location interesting for you to invest in? Um, you know, there, there's many factors and there's generally no one perfect thing. The first thing is that, you know, it needs to be uh, in close proximity to a large user population. Um, second thing is that we want to have access to um, renewable energy at that site. We need to have uh, access to appropriate amounts of land and the, the resources, power and water and whatnot. But, um, but primarily, it also has to do with the, um, the availability of talent in that area because you know we want to hire local teams to, to run the sites for us and so we we're always looking for areas that have a good labor pool also. Okay. Which is one challenge of the data center space today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, okay, but then for example, when we look at your footprint on the map, mm -hmm. you have a good footprint in North America, a good footprint in Europe, you're expanding in Asia, then across the, the, the emerging markets, more yeah. towards the southern hemisphere. Uh, is Google working on anything around those places? So uh, we have 16 global large data center mm -hmm. locations around the world. We have more than you know, 100 edge and, and pop locations. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are in almost every country around the world already with a network presence. Mm. Um, and when we build the data center there, you know, we'll typically start by maybe uh, leasing some space. Mm. And then as the market grows for us and we have a little bit more certainty about the demand, mm. then we'll start to build our own. So we're constantly reevaluating every new region to, to mm. go into. So yes, we will be in those regions mm. eventually. Mm. Okay, and then the cloud market has changed a lot over the years as well, especially when the enterprises start adopting cloud in a big scale. How has the enterprise adoption of cloud sort of changed Google's own strategy as well? Um, so for us, many of our enterprise customers have their own sustainability mandates and they have their own corporate sustainability initiatives. Um, our strategy is that we're building the world's uh, largest and most sustainable cloud. And so by that, we take three pillars. First, um, efficient and smart data centers. Okay. The second is renewable energy and carbon neutrality. And the third pillar is on um, diversion of waste to landfill mm -hmm. and a circular economy, mm -hmm. reusing and recycling. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have um, big focus in all of those areas. Mm -hmm. And to us, that kind of is a 360 degree look at what makes a sustainable mm. cloud. Mm. Okay, and actually it's interesting you mentioned renewable energy because it's, it's a big topic at the conference that we are at it as well. Uh, what sort of message would you have for the, the global sector, so not just Google, the global sector around renewable energy? Are people getting this right? Are people yeah. just letting um, it go? So, so it's a mixed bag, to mm. be honest, uh, but in general, you know, we're the world's largest corporate purchaser of renewable energy. So far we've signed more than 30 contracts globally for more than 3,500 megawatts, so 3.5 gigawatts of renewable energy. Which is more than the whole day, collocation data center space in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, um, you know, we match 100% of our total electric consumption for data centers mm -hmm. and Google uh, Enterprise with renewable energy. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we've been at this a long time and we've uh, developed some constructs. The problems come in that not all areas of the world have easy access to renewable energy. Some of it is policy issues that have to be overcome. Some of it is development that has to be um, you know, spurred with economic investment. Um, so it really depends where it is. In parts of the world, in, in many parts of Europe and in North America, access to renewable energy is pretty, pretty straightforward. In parts of the developing world, it's not, not yet. And so we're, we're working on policy and, uh, and um, technology and financial investment to try and spur renewable energy everywhere. By us using our, um, you know, our, our buying power to put more renewable energy on the grid, it doesn't help just us, it helps everyone yeah. on that grid. We also want to be an example for others on how to do this as well. Hmm. Okay, and then the interesting side of things as well is technology side yeah. of things. So it, Google has used artificial intelligence and machine learning. Yep. What have you done so far and what are you sort of playing around AI, ML, and even robotics? And what sort of future technology do you see 
getting into the Google data center. Yeah, it's a very interesting time right now. So we started uh, developing uh, um, machine learning applications to make our data centers more efficient, mm -hmm. and we realized that, um, that the computers could more effectively evaluate the right operating conditions for a data center that day given the outside air temperature, given the direction of the wind and all of these environmental factors and how much load is in the data center at that time. So now we have um, automated systems that are managing the data center cooling infrastructure almost in real time. Okay. And, uh, and you know, frankly, they're, they're able to do it in a, a more precise manner than what, you know, than, than what the people were doing. Um, we're also applying machine learning now to some of our renewable energy projects. Okay. So in some of our wind farms, we've developed a machine learning algorithm that can predict the wind and the output of that, that wind farm 36 hours in advance. Hmm. That's really important because renewable energy is intermittent, right? Sometimes the wind doesn't yeah. blow. And if you're a grid operator, you have to have a constant uh, um, energy generation. Mm -hmm. So they can't really count on it, so they don't program it onto the yeah. grid. But if you have a very accurate model that tells you how much that wind farm is going to generate, then they can use it better, and then it becomes more valuable because we're actually selling onto the grid mm -hmm the full amount that the wind farm can generate at that time. Hmm. Um, so these advancements are, are continuing. It's, uh, it's, hmm. um, it's expediting. The, the pace of uh, innovation yeah. in this, this area is, is getting more rapid. And the efficiency is becoming much better. How would you sort of describe the data center of the future? Like in uh, 40 years time. Yeah, data center of the future. Really, um, we want it to be ubiquitous, meaning hmm. compute anywhere and everywhere you need it. Hmm. We want to be there. We want it to be sustainable. We want it to be responsible, and um, and we want it to be ultra secure and highly available. Mm -hmm. Now, all of those things we've been thinking about as an industry for a long time, but really we have to think about how to do that in places around the world that we mm -hmm. haven't necessarily built out the infrastructure mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think the data center of the future is mm -hmm. certainly much more global. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, the next billion people to become uh, on the, the worldwide internet, they're not going to be in North America and Europe. They're going to be in, in the developing world. And so we need to be there to meet people where they need us, when they need as us. As soon as they need you, yeah. yeah. And then last, around the last question, you're also part of the Infrastructure Masons, which is quite well known for addressing some of the biggest challenges in the market, uh, especially around talent shortages, diversity, mm -hmm. gender equality. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge the global data center sector faces today? Oh, without a doubt, I, I was speaking with several of my peers yesterday, and we all agree universally that mm -hmm. um, that the, the talent shortage in the industry is the biggest challenge that we're all facing. Um, and, and it's kind of a twofold problem. Many of us are approaching the time when we want to start retiring. <laughs> and, uh, um, and the fact is, is that not enough young people have been coming into the industry, largely because I think it's a, an awareness issue. People are not generally aware, if people think data centers, they think I have to be a computer scientist. Mm. But that's just one area of study for data center technology. You know, it, there's Especially so many this. opportunities, and we as an industry need to reach out to the, the technical universities, to the uh, junior colleges, uh, to the trade schools, and start to really, really build a very broad pipeline mm. to serve this industry mm. for the future. Mm. Okay, educate the consumer out there. And then lastly, we are getting into the new decade, so we're about six months away from 2020. Mm -hmm. What's the thing that excites you the most about the next 10 years? Achievable thing. Yeah, um, so for us, uh, our, our next big challenge is, you know, we're already matching 100% renewable energy to our full consumption, but we want to do that on a seven by 24 basis. That means hour for hour matching our full consumption with renewable energy. That's going to require some technological innovation in storage technologies, in um, advanced uh, um, management of the renewable energy on the grids. Mm -hmm. It's going to require some policy work. So um, that is, uh, it's, it's a very difficult challenge and we're not there yet, yeah. um, but we're, we're setting that as our, our next objective. So I think the, the next decade winds up being uh, focused more on um, responsible use of the resources, on um, uh, you know available computing everywhere it's necessary, and um, and really building a sustainable cloud that everyone can use. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. exciting times coming then. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so thanks a lot for talking to me. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh -huh. Thank you. Don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.